Welcome back. So, last uh, uh, lecture we were talking about the different type, different categories of clastic rocks. So, rhodaceous, arenaceous and argillaceous and then we were talking about that uh, this is one of the example of the rhodaceous rock. What is the importance of this in, uh, in uh, day to day environment okay, what we look at. Okay. So, conglomerate which is comprised of clastic uh, sediments mainly pebble and cobble along with the ground mass. So, if cementation is good. So, void uh, that is the, the void between the, the class, then the, the conglomerate okay, will be hard and compact or competent hence act as a strong foundation. So, okay, this is an importance for C particularly, but not good rock for the ground water source. Okay. So, this is, this is one of the important part. However, if the cementation is poor, okay, it makes the rock more porous with high porosity. So, in, then, in that sense it is good reservoir for ground water or it is good aquifer, but is undesirable at the site for the foundation of major sea structures. Okay. So, when you come across the conglomerates, you need to know that whether what type of cement it has. Okay. If it is competent or good cement, okay, then you can use that as an uh, what indicate that these are the good found uh, good for the foundation, but if it is poor cementation okay, and which breaks easily then uh, it is not good for the, uh, the foundation. Okay. So, due to heavy seepage the conglomerate may result into failure by sliding and one of the example for the failure of San Francisco dam in US was because the conglomerate was uh, poor, poorly cemented. Now, uh, cementation in particularly, if you take that material is usually the secondary silica okay, and siliceous cement. If you are having carbon, calcium carbonate, we say the carbonate cement or it is ferromagnesium cement iron rich. So, most harder if you like look at, we will find that if it is having the ferromagnesium and uh, cement. Okay. So, cement itself uh, to some extent is the source of weakness to the cementate rocks as we have discussed in the previous slide. Okay. Because the cementation material and the clastic sediments are usually of different composition. So, you will have the clast are of different composition and the cement is will be of different composition. So, that is an heterogeneity which we will have okay, leading into the heterogeneity of the of their physical characteristics. Okay. So, this is one uh, important part of the cement which you can remember either it is siliceous, uh, carbonate rich or you are having the iron rich cement. Okay. So, because of this such rocks will not behave homogeneously under stress. Okay. So, this is very important part when we were talking when we will talk about the, the shear strength and all that. Okay. So, since they are comprised of different uh, material, so we will have an sort of an heterogeneity will have the heterogeneity of the material within that uh, uh, rock, plastic rock. Hence, they will behave differently under the stress, okay, resulting into the development of cracks and fissures. So, if you are having softer material, which is uh, uh, either the, the rock class okay, or the fragment, which is uh, of, of the minerals, which are less harder, okay, then it will break early as compared to the, the ground mass. Okay. So, uh, because the, the, the conglomerates will have uh, the uh, heterogeneous material, the, the rock will not behave homogeneously under stress resulting into the development of cracks or fissures which develops in the cementing material. Okay. So, either the cementing material will crack or the, the rock fragments will crack. Okay. So, if the cement is calcium carbonate for example, it is undesirable because it is susceptible to dissolve in water. Okay. So, calcium carbonate will dissolve in water. So, it is not good. So, if you find the, the material or the conglomerate cementation material with calcium carbonate, you should avoid. Okay. However, if the cement process, uh, cementation process continue for longer span okay, of time, cementation will become more 
complete, okay, which reduces the porosity and permeability of in the rock mass and increase the competency. That is the the strength of the rock will increase. So, if the the process of cementation and compaction compaction will will last for longer period, then you will have better uh, uh, rock strength. Okay, shape of the grains are also important. That is, if the grain size, the coarser grains are rounded or sub-rounded, then the cementing material will not have firm grip. Okay, so if you are having brasier as compared to the conglomerates, then the braciers are better because they will have angular fragments. Okay, within that. Okay, so this is the reason why they will have the the incompetentness. Okay, so most of the the coarser gravels which are uh, the co coarser grains which are rounded in shape will result into the incompetent rocks. Okay. So, this is another part in terms of the shape. Okay. So, once we have previously we have talked about the, the chemical composition of the, um, uh, of the, uh, the matrix, okay, what we are having or the cementing material and then we are having the, the shape of the grain size. Okay. Quartz sandstone and this is Arcos feldspar rich sandstone we are having. So, made up of sand, grain, uh, sand grains dominantly of quartz and feldspars, where the quartz is highly resistive to weathering. So, cementation plays similar role in this rock as seen in conglomerate. However, silicious cement are best and highly desirable for C purposes, also the ferromagnesium sandstone. Okay. Use of sandstone in historical structures. Okay, so if you look around uh, and just uh, try to see that uh, different monuments, historical structures in India itself, you will find that most of the historical structures in Delhi and around are made up of sandstone. Okay, and those are again the ferrogenous sandstone. Okay, so we are having mostly this type of uh, material. So this is in Red Fort which is in New Delhi, a red sandstone was been brought from the quarries of Dholpur in Rajasthan and Fatehpur Sikri. So, this is the, the example of the sandstone and the structure which was been constructed from the sandstone. This is in, inside that region, okay, we are having again, you can see beautiful carving is in ferrogenous sandstone. Again, Kutub Menar, of course, this part is uh, uh, having marble but rest of the stories are having all sandstone. Okay. Then we are having the, uh, the famous uh, uh, area in Fatehpur Sikri and along with the Bulan Darwaza, this again is made up of sandstone here. Okay. Then this is in uh, the Agra fort. Now coming to the, uh, the another finer uh, size uh, uh, sedimentary rocks. So, we have seen conglomerate, we have talked about sandstone, we have talked about the, uh, now we will talk about the finer one which are shales. Okay. And please remember that what is the importance of the cementing material, what is the importance of the, uh, the uh, shape of the uh, clastic grains okay, or the clast. Okay. Now, shales are mostly the fine grains. So, uh, they are, they mainly comprise of silt or clay. They are most abundant sedimentary rocks account for about 80 percent of them, okay. often contain fossils, mostly hydrous aluminum silicate in composition, sourced for weather, uh, sourced from weathered feldspars. Okay. So, deposition take place under low fluvial regime or low fluvial uh, conditions or under weak water currents, offshore or in lagoonal environment also mostly seen. Okay. Shales are made up of fine, well sorted silt and clay sediments, where these clay sediments have tendency to retain water. Okay. So, in the beginning, when we were talking about uh, the, the minerals, okay, the clay minerals have sheet uh, uh, structures okay, and sheet structures are having capability of holding water. Okay. So, they, they have the capability of retaining water which can result into the, the weakening of the this type of rocks that is particularly shale. Okay. So, if you are coming across shale, 
is again it is not very good to put any uh, civil structure on that okay because it can hold water and result into the slippage along the plains okay so see importance if you take in terms of when shales are saturated with water under pressure they likely they are likely to produce slippery foundation for any structure okay therefore not suitable for putting any civil structures on that okay example lefort dams of us constructed on the argillaceous rock okay it sank by almost 20 feet okay so this was the mistake which was been done in us also in in uh, india sarisalam dam in andhra pradesh so one of the 12th rajesh hydro uh, hydroelectric project in india faced similar problem however percolations were taken precautions were taken by grouting and stopping the seepage but had an problem because of the uh, it had an foundation which was made up of shales okay then because of um, uh, that is the shale because of its impermeable and porous nature it acts as a cap rock for the occurrence of oil and gas so in in a way it is good for the uh, the uh, the fuel uh, minerals but it is not good for the for the foundations okay so evaporitic rocks if you look at then this rocks are formed within a depositional basins from chemical substances dissolved in sea water or lake water okay so one is gypsum again they are evaporites so mostly seen in the arid region or semi arid regions okay and then we are having the the halite okay economic importance of the uh, the evaporites salt of course other than daily use of the salt cooking uh, we use in for cooking and and for and other than that we are having for the production of paper then we are having in soap detergent antiseptics okay as chemical for dyeing industries so gypsum particularly is used for plaster and is manufacturing construction material okay so we are having the the economic importance for this uh, uh minerals okay other this rocks okay evaporitic rocks mainly the salt and gypsum then we are having the carbonate rocks so limestone it is again a non clastic uh, rock formed either chemically or due to precipitation okay of calcite or from the um, organic uh, material or we can say the organisms usually the shells okay so limestone formed by chemical precipitations are usually fine grains whereas which are formed uh, with the uh, which comprises the organisms are comparatively coarser grains okay so whereas uh, in the case of organic limestone the grain size varies depending upon the type of organisms responsible for the formation so either the the shells are larger size or the smaller size depending on that it will be uh, it will it, the grain size will be seen okay but most of the uh, because of the precipitation if you see the limestone they are fine grains okay they are also termed as fossiliferous limestones they are medium to coarse grain uh, in nature and uh, as it formed out of the cementation of the shells mostly the shells are responsible or these are the this example of the fine grain uh, limestone and here you are having coarser grain limestone okay fossiliferous limestone so you can see the shells here the size of the shells here okay and these are all all medium size shells but most of the uh, here you are having larger uh, shells and then you are having a round mass whereas here mostly you see as the shelly material or broken shells okay then we have chalk which is again in fine grain uh, rock sedimentary rock it is made up of carbonate shells and mostly uh, the very fine or small size organisms we can say which are termed as foraminifers okay a very fine grain so used as a building stone and in manufacturing of lime and cement massive they are massive and compact in nature okay so uh, they they are competent to support the sea structures however if it occurs in huge thickness 
then it is not advisable because they typical have the caving characteristics. Okay. Subsolution activity will result into the caving effect. Hence, in most of the places, if you are having very thick deposit, they are not advisable for the putting any civil structure on that, okay. because it will result into the subsidence of the surface of the because of the caving from below. Now, coming to the, uh, the structures, okay. so we have looked at uh, uh, the, the, the composition, then we were talking about the grain size, we were talking about the, uh, the shape. Now, we will talk about the sedimentary structures mainly. Okay. Now, looking at the sedimentary structures also, one can also talk about that uh, the depositional environment, also the energy conditions and all that. Okay. Now, before getting into the, uh, the sedimentary structures, we will just look at that the we have the either structureless okay, or they are having poor beddings or they are well bedded. So, uh, there is no structure, so very calm environment, so deposition has taken place. So, bedding place is mostly most important uh, feature of the sedimentary rocks okay. and the beds which are having usually size greater than 1 centimeters are termed as beds okay, or the layers which are having uh, the size greater than, so thickness is greater than 1 centimeter, they are termed as beds. And and the, uh, the layers which are having the size or the thickness less than 1 centimeter are termed as lamellae. So, orientation of the bedding helps in knowing the paleo currents also. So, these are horizontally stratified. So, they are deposited in a very calm environment, but if you if you and mostly this type of structures are associated with the lacustrine or the lake environment where you are having a basin and then very calm deposition is taking place. But if you are having a flow deposit, then this orientation or the, the angularity of this will change. That is the attitude of the beds will change, will have different uh, angle. Okay. So, cross bedding refers to beds okay, indicating the de of deposition under variable flow regime. Okay and it helps in identifying the depositional direction in which direction they were deposited. So, for example, we are having these are the cross stratification here. Okay. So, we are having this uh, inclination here. So, we can say that deposition was in the, the deposition took place in from this direction. Okay. So, the flow was in this direction. Similarly, here we are having fine grain lithophases and then we are having the medium to coarse grain lithophysis. So, this also helps in identifying or understanding. So, this is the contact here which is a graded gradational contact. We cannot say that is a very sharp one, but we can. So, we have in contact here we can say. So, graded bedding if we take what we see is that we will have the coarser deposits at the bottom and then we have the finer deposit at the top, okay, which is what we call the fining upward sequence. Okay. And this again indicates the deposition, either it is, uh, it was fast or maybe we can say it was, it was within high energy conditions and slowly it reduced or lost its turbulence. Okay. So, when it started with the deposition was turbulence and then slows down. Okay. So, the grain size varies from bottom to top. Okay. So, at this stage, the heaviest or the largest particles will settle down fast followed by the lighter ones and the smaller ones on the surface. Okay. So, we are having the graded sequence here. Okay. So, we, if you look at this part, then we have uh, different cycles here. Okay. So, one is coarser then become finer. So, this is one. We have and then coarser and finer, we are having another cycle and then we are having this one is third here. Okay. So, we have at least three sequence of deposition in this one. Okay. So, flow condition started with the, uh, with the turbulent one slowed down and then turbulent one slowed down. So, we are having different cycles here, which also you can identify if you understand the graded sequence in the nature. Okay. <clears throat> so, this is an example of 
the graded sequence. And as we was talking about that, the horizontal laminations okay, will help you in identifying in that what was the environment in which they were been deposited. So this we, we which is we say that rhythmic layers. Okay, so they are having very fine layers which have been seen, and they are indicative of deposition under the lake environment. Okay, so when you understand this uh, deposits or try to date. You can also try to understand that the depositional sequence in this region. So, this indicates a very calm environment under which they got deposited. They are termed as wafts. Then, uh, these are the illustrations which uh, gives you an idea about the, uh, the surface manifestation as well as the, uh, the structures of different uh, in which were formed in different sedimentary environments, okay, which are like for example, you are having horizontal stratas okay, and then you are having graded beddings, we have already discussed. We have cross beddings, which also helps you in identifying the, the flow directions, so the flow. Okay. So, this will indicate again the, the flow direction here. Then we are having the cross beddings. Okay, which are having bimodal directions. So, this also indicates that if you take this one okay, and they are inclined, uh, they, are, they are showing inclination here. Okay. So, they were got, they got deposited here, the flow direction again. So, they are having different directions of the flow are mostly seen uh, in the in the areas where you are having the, the bi-directional uh, mode of deposition. Okay. So, in the coastal region again you will see this type of things and also in the in the where you are having the formation of sand dunes and all that. Okay. And the oscillations again this type of ripple marks are formed where the oscillation of water is back and forth mainly in tidal regions. Okay. So, we will find this type of deposits. Similarly, again we are having more which you can go through which we have mud cracks. Okay, on the surface, then we are having fruit marks, then we are having uh, the, the, uh, the, the roots or maybe we are having the animal burrows and all that and different type of burrows are there. And then we are having footprints also which, which usually get preserved on the surface uh, are also been uh, helped uh, to identify the different type of environments and all that okay. or the, the floras and faunas in, from that region. Okay. So, cross stratification, okay, this is the direction of the flow. If you are having the cross bedding here and the direction of, of the flow, you can you can talk about that how they will be deposited. Okay. So, again you can have the, the flow directions, these are the indications of the, these are, uh, the inclination of the, the, the beds, but the, the deposition the direction will be in the opposite one. Okay. And then you are having sand dunes. So again, you can try to identify or understand the different uh, depositional environment. Okay, how they were been deposited. So you can have large scale cross stratification and dunes also, which can help you in understanding that how this dune was built up. Okay, cross stratification. This we termed as in cross stratification. We are having cross cutting relationship between the different beds here. Okay. Then we are having ripple marks, okay, which again as I was talking about that they will indicate the depositional environment at different locations. So, on the surface you will be able to see this type of features which are because of the, the oscillation of the, uh, the water in the region. Okay. So, in sections you will be able to see uh, this type of deposits and in fossilized rocks you may come across the, uh, the the features which you see in the present day tidal environments, okay, which can tell you easily that this was the region which had an, exp uh, or had an environment which was very much like a tidal environment which we see today. Then biogenic structures or the footprints can also help you uh, in uh, identifying the different uh, 
uh, what we can say floras and flon faunas in the region. Okay. So this is an example of the footprints. Okay. So this will talk about the uh, will tell about the the faunas, but from floras you will you may have the uh, the leaf prints or maybe you can have the uh, the the fossilized wood or something like that which can help you in identifying that. Okay. So mud cracks again in the the tidal environments you can find or the regions where you are having very dry spills. So, you can also look at the different type of structures. So, this is in present day and this is an older one which are found in the sedimentary rocks. Okay. So, these are all related to the sedimentary structures. I okay. will stop here uh, and we can start with the, uh, the next lecture talking about the metamorphic rocks. Okay. Thank you so much.